Agritech is one space that's proven to be the next big thing for startups with the application of various technological innovations to improve efficiency and output, a number of agritech startups are creating solutions to eliminate farm losses. Agritech, which is the use of technology in agriculture, horticulture and aquaculture to improve yields and profitability, has helped optimize the farming process. In Nigeria, agritech startups have continued to tackle some of the challenges farmers face by streamlining the agricultural value chain. However, more needs to be done to make the process easier and provide the necessary support to scale. We chat with Jerry Ocher, a co-founder of Zoacel, to discuss how technology can be leveraged to boost the agriculture sector. Wow. So interestingly, uh, there's no any blue line anymore. So we've seen the convergence of uh, technology into agriculture, agriculture into technology. We've seen um, uh, young lads, startups, trying to use technology to empower all aspects of our cultural value chain, uh, right from uh, population, uh, land preparation, clary, cultivation itself, harvesting, and all of that, using data to analyze and predict what will likely happen across the ecosystem. So I think uh, there's no blue line anymore. Uh, we're just exploring opportunities, innovating to see how we can solve problems. So explain the concept of agritech. So again, uh, the concept of agritech uh, is the use of um, technology into our cultural value chain. Uh, if you look at what's going around um, around the continent, uh, you see uh, startups trying to use uh, uh, innovation innovation technology to solve agricultural problems from across different value chain. We've seen that happen from drones to that happen even down to data analysis, trying to analyze data, try to capture data, analyze data, and predict what will happen. And of course, even down to spraying agricultural uh, um, uh, um, input across the farm, unlike what we have. Uh, some years back. So what the government announces that young people should move to the farms, how would you interpret such an instruction or such an advice? Uh, so, 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 I, so, so I think it's good because so that, that just gives opportunity for us to, uh, for young people to come actually key into different parts of the cultural value chain. It's not necessarily going to use holes to farm uh, as it were in, um, in, some, in the last decade, but to actually use technology to innovate. And it's not everybody that will actually go to the farm, that is a whole launch, is a whole chain of um, value chain that people need to tap just for you to look what you think is necessary for you. Uh, if you want to look at the commodity aspect, is big, processing is there, cultivation itself is there, data analysis is there. So there's so much aspect that people can tap into, not necessarily going to use the conventional uh, hole and all of that to farm. So, so as, as a player in the industry, do you think that we have a national strategy that would help us maximize the opportunities in the agri-tech se sector today? Oh, I, 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 at the moment we don't. There's nothing being communicated by, by anybody or any department. But what, uh, what is going on is uh, the, the same thing happens everywhere in the world. So the ecosystem starts uh, developing. Uh, individuals start doing one or two innovation, trying to solve problems. But I think with time, we'll probably will have a national strategy where things will come. We've seen that happen in terms of what, uh, what the government tried to do with the cattle and all the rest. But again, at the moment, we're just freestyling. So we're just looking at opportunities, what we can do. So maybe later, there will be maybe a national strategy. Let's hope the freestyle is not so long. Yeah, it will. Yeah, but, but as a player in the industry, what would your advice be to relevant stakeholders today? So again, I think uh, it, it's a simple fact. The, 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 the way we find ourselves, we're at an at, at advantage right now because we are in the, in the digital era, so we don't need to go back and do things the way they were done before. So it's for us to actually come together, explore these opportunities, see what individuals are doing across the value chain and see how the government can come and play in, into that system. So if I give for instance, you, you actually will see that the government is more interested in cultivation. Over 95% of activity going on in the agricultural sector are focused on cultivation. But there's so much aspect of, outside cultivation. We play in the agribusiness aspect. So what happens if, if the farmers are done with their cultivation? Who buys the product? Who monitors that? Who ensures that they get value for money? Who ensures quality? These are things that I need to look at. Who ensures logistics? Is there a policy around logistics? So what happened to insurance? Insurance per insurance is very small in the agri sector. So how would government policy affect that? So I think there's a whole lot of opportunities for government to come in and play, and even other stakeholders. Now, one of the issues in the agri-tech sector, or in the agriculture sector in general, is the level of literacy of farmers and a couple of other people in the, in the value chain. Um, how do we overcome that? Again, it's an opportunity because we, we, we are, if, if we want everybody to be literate in terms of English literacy, then that, that would be a whole lot of difficult. Uh, that would be a whole lot of difficult for us. But what we need to look at now is look at how do we get them, how do we 
customer solutions, our innovations into local dialect that these guys understand. Now, the, our farmers are not typically illiterate. They are only illiterate in English, but they speak their local language, they write in their local languages. So why not customize solutions for them in that? We've seen what happened in China. The Chinese don't have to use English to teach their people. So how do we customize these solutions across different languages where people understand? So imagine you have, uh, you have a solution where you have it in English, House and, uh, and, and, and Igbo. So what happens? It means that the mama in the village don't need to, necessarily need to go to school or study English first. She can just understand our Igbo language, our Yoruba language, and all of that. So I think those are how we, uh, th these are the opportunities that we have to actually get people to start using technologies and to innovate, to uh, embrace innovation. Let's look at AI, big data, actual intelligence, uh, machine learning, IoT, and the rest of them. How do you think these technologies affect agriculture today? So it's a simple answer. The, the idea of that is always is, is getting uh, is, is getting statistics. It provides opportunity for us to get data, analyze data, and predict and see what will happen. So I give I give for instance uh, in, in today's um, in, in today's world, uh, someone doing uh, someone farming let's say ten hectares. The, the days of you going to just assume that those that the land is fertile is over. You need to analyze the land and get some sample analyze the land to know exactly what what that land what will be suitable for that land. Even down to input recommendation. What kind of input do you need for that land part time? The same kind of the same piece of land will have different variables. So that's where you have IOTs, you have using drones to get data, all of that. So I think there's a whole lot of opportunities that we can do. Infrastructure seems to be a challenge from what I've heard from a number of agri tech startups. And how are you dealing with that challenge? So, so the good news again is uh, it still provides opportunity for other, um, uh, um, uh, other people, other startups to innovate. We'll see what Kobo Tris is doing, raising money to bring in fleet and all of that. So now that's an opportunity. So if we wait for the government to do that, we probably will not, I will not get startup. But again, uh, as an entrepreneur, for me, I think those are opportunities. It's because the system is that backward. That's why we need to innovate. That's why we need to actually make money. So I think, again, if we have, uh, we talk about infrastructure today, uh, the days where we're going to wait for the government to put rail system into the rural areas are probably going to, probably going to not, probably not come soon. So how do we ensure startup actually innovate like Kobo is doing? There's so many other sectors that we can actually look at that kind of, you know, in terms of infrastructure. Now actually complement what everyone is doing. We, ha we hear announcements of various kinds of funds available for those players in the agri agricultural sector. Uh, and I'm wondering, have you as a startup tried to access those funds? Well, so, so again, it's, it's, it's institutional financing from, uh, do you mean from the government or from... Uh, uh, from well, f f so, so the government again, the, the government does not understand the concept of startup. So what the government look at is uh, looking at funding established companies. Now established companies who have history, financial history, all of that, five years, ten years, three years. But again, startup, we don't have that kind of history. We are just innovators who try to do stuff. So there's no fund targeted at all. So what you do is you go to these funds, you, you, you are meant to provide this kind of documentation that corporations should, should have. But imagine that you're talking to a startup who just had maybe a year, a year old or so, a few months, don't have this kind of data, this kind of financial backup to support the kind of money they're looking for. So I think that is a major challenge. So the government needs to look at how do you create funds available for innovators in every sector and see what if you seed funding and see how you can give those funds for them to innovate and solve problems. But if we keep what we are doing now to, uh, to ensure that, uh, to expect that a startup like us will provide bank statement of maybe XYZ amount of money for XYZ period of time to choose transaction. But, but, but we, might just, we might just be doing the same thing over time because no startup has that kind of, uh, have done that kind of transaction, or that kind of volume, or that kind of years of, 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 of work to show that, to, to, to qualify for such loans. So the loans I mentioned in the sector, but again, it's still the big players that can afford that kind of loan. See the conventional companies that can afford that kind of loan. Finally, Jerry, um, any word of advice for startups um, that are coming behind you? So for me, I would say maybe two things. One, again, is to ensure that uh, before you go funding, raise for funding, ensure you validate you validate your model, ensure you get you have enough traction. If you do that, uh, the funds will come after you against trying to raise funds before validating your model or growing your traction. So focus is to use your funds, use your effort, put your energy to ensure that you have enough traction that will attract people to come to you against you going to look for funds. Jerry, thank you for being on the show today. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Sir. My guest has been Jerry Oche, founder Zoocell, an agri-tech startup playing a role in the value chain. Yes, it is fine to advise young people to move to the farms, but the bigger question, if you ask me, is this. How do we get them to take up more important roles along the entire value chain? A nation like Israel may be considered small in terms of size and population, but has an agri sector that is super advanced, and it's all thanks to technology. If we must become an agri-tech powerhouse, 
then we need to attract the right kind of investment into that sector, particularly supporting startups already making things happen in that space. We've come to the end of the show, but it doesn't end here. The conversation continues online. We are Tech Trends TV on social media. Also watch the show on Channels TV YouTube page or via CFA blog.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukameka Agbata.